Hi there guys, Sam here, welcome back to another video and this week on, um, well, my weekly news on a Monday evening, I'm going to talk a little bit around the GT4 RS, um, the ID3R and the Mark 8 Golf R. So yeah, I'll, I'll get straight into the video really. So yes, um, welcome back to another video and another sort of weekly news type um, video that I try to do on um, sort of Monday evenings. Um, I hope you've all been enjoying them, I hope you all had a good start to your week. And um, yeah, this video is always a little bit more casual, chatting about some of the latest news, some of my thoughts around yeah, some impressive cars that are out there, and none more impressive than the car on my right hand side, the GT4 RS. Now there's been plenty of sort of spy shots testing around here, and I've got a video on that and the link above my head if you want to go check that out, see some really cool detailed images of the car. Um, it looks, yeah, it's a stunning piece of kit, and... <laughs> It's it's strange, isn't it? It's that sort of almost base level of performance in a Cayman in some ways because it is their lowest product compared to the 911. Obviously, you've got the GT3, the GT4, um, the GT2 RS, and so forth. That it's actually more of the sweeter car to have, and I think a lot of people are looking forward to it. Um, one thing that I really wanted to talk about here is, <laughs> is what a lot of people do is they tend to well, modify their cars and they want to get the peak performance and as, as good as you can possibly get. Now there is a company called Manti Racing which and they develop um, bits for say the GT2 RS and other Porsche products and they've recently released something around the GT3 RS MR basically and it costs an extra, it's an expensive package. I think you're looking at anywhere between like anywhere from sort of like 10,000 to sort of like 60,000 pounds for like this full package on top of your obviously standard asking price for your GT3 and if you're from the UK you'll know GT3s are um, sort of above list or basically what they were worth when someone paid them for them so they're not cheap and this is a couple of years on or whatever um, and you can get this MR kit which will make it the best of the best and you know everyone loves it and I think a lot of people will go for something like that as like a fun all-out car over a GT2 RS and that's because of obviously the price difference not many people are going to handle sort of 700 plus brake horsepower 520-ish and the GT3 is better now going on to the GT4 RS now I reckon sort of around 450 brake horsepower that with an MR kit you're almost looking at like some proper all-out racer at a potentially very affordable price. Um, it's a car I'm really looking forward to, a car I'm really, really looking forward to actually driving as well. Um, once we hear a lot more details on it, I want to share as much information as I can on this car, um, and I will do so as soon as I hear more, similar to what I do with the Mark 8 Golf R and other you know, products that I'm interested in and you lot are interested in as well. Um, I just think it's a really exciting car, and it's it just shows, it says to me why you don't need to go for sort of like the best of the best of the best to have a fantastic car. Because what the Cayman actually does is with its sort of mid-engine chassis, it's lighter weight. You know, they're, they're heavier cars nowadays for various emissions and crazy um, unfortunate reasons like that. Just, you know, safety and everything combined, which is fair enough, but it adds weight, which dense performance are fundamentally. You know, ultimately, like a lightweight Formula One car, its only objective is to be fast. Safety is only really concerned for the driver, not necessarily for hitting people, if that makes sense. You know, pedestrians aren't normally wandering around um, Formula One circuit. So there's so many limitations that have to be taken in place for normal outgoing road cars. But this has got everything, you know, even just... Even just looking at it, it just looks like a fearsome little car. And it's something that I'm eager to hear more about and share on this channel because it's a cool car. Um, so yeah, Porsche, get a move on, get more um, information out there. You know, hopefully we'll see some more spy shots. Hopefully there'll be lots more um, information around the specs as well. So yeah, stay tuned to this channel. I'll share it as soon as and when. The next um, topic that I wanted to kind of talk about was the ID3R. Now I've seen some few a few images recently this week just as a normal ID3, if you're not familiar, it's the essentially, and I'll sort of go on to this a little bit later as well, the replacement for the Golf, basically. They're sort of slowly transitioning it in whilst it's still out there. The Mark 8 will be, has been released. Um, 
will there be a Mark 9? I, I kind of doubt it. I think this is the swan song for the Golf. Um, which is sad, you know, it's been such an iconic car. I've sold so many. It's been around for so many decades. Um, it's done a great job, but yeah, times are changing so rapidly in front of us. Um, you've got to move on. Now, the interesting thing with the ID3 is that, again, it's going to design to be a mass-produced car um, Yeah, for everyone, which is kind of what the Golf's motto was. Now, what was always worrying me is that there wouldn't be actually be sort of like a performance variance. Would the R brand actually die? Well, the R brand itself is not going to go anywhere because they've already VW already shown that they're introducing it into their SUVs, the Tiguan and the, like the T Rock and the um, Touareg, um, the RT on R as well. So that they've got you know other range. You know the the R isn't going anywhere basically. But with the Golf R, you know will the Mark Eight Golf R be the last one? It wouldn't surprise me. Um, you know, let's say this new generation of Golf has a lifespan of eight years. Are they really going to want to put do a Mark Nine? Um, I'm not so sure it's going to be cost effective. And, and if they did, you know, how much effort are they going to be putting into that? I, I can see sort of like a halfway like facelift and eight point five or whatever, um, but I can't see them actually going all out there and producing another Golf. To be honest, you know, if you're not familiar with my channel, I'm sure you are if you're tuning into this video. But I've got a Mark Seven Golf R. Um, and I think in years to come, it will really kind of, you'll look back at that as being a really cracking car. It really did change the game, certainly for me. Um, that's how, that's why I got one. You know, I'm, I'm quite um, specific in what, what I buy. You know, I look after my purchases and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it, it takes a lot for me to, to, to spend money, I suppose. Um, yeah, and it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic car. And yeah. You're probably going to see on this channel forever because I just can't ever see myself getting rid of it. Um, the Mark A, like I've said before, I see it as more of like evolution rather than revolution. Um, swanky bits in the interior and dash and stuff, which ultimately they're just going to transition eventually over to the ID3 fully. Um, the ID3, incidentally, is despite the fact that it looks, um, it's actually wider and longer than a normal Golf. And it's, it's how it just plays tricks with your eyes with the styling because it's a taller car. Um, it makes it seem thinner, but it's actually not. It's also a heavier car because obviously it's got batteries. Um, it's also not a particularly cheap car either. A base ID3 in the UK after a government grant is about £35,800. Um, that's after £3,000 grants. So you could basically get a top spec well, you could get a Mark 8 Golf R for the price of a standard ID3, or you could get a very high spec Mark 8, whatever you want, R Line, GTI, or something like that, um, for the price of an ID3. So, price wise, it's they need to sort it out with the batteries and stuff. Now, an ID3 R is definitely going to be on the cards. Now, tune back into this video <laughs> in like four or five years' time and there will definitely be an ID3 R, 100%. They'll, I reckon they will use the R platform more so in the electric ranges than the GTI. I think we've seen it with the actual ID R, that fully electric record breaker, you know, Pike's Peak record breaker, goes up the Goodwood Festival Spill Hill in, get my words out, the Goodwood Festival Speed Hill, quicker than anything. Um, Nürburgring, everything. It's just a brilliant car. And the R like badge and brand was sort of really highlighted with that. And they haven't really done that so much with the GTI, which is obviously the previous pinnacle of VW. So I can see, yeah, I, I can see there being an ID 3R or however they kind of produce the ID range. Um, and that's something to really look forward to. I think particularly for car enthusiasts, we've got to kind of pin our hopes on those kind of things because combustion engines are going whether you want it like it or not whether you you know ultimately the combustion engines are going to start devaluing over time um you know the days of you know nothing lasts forever basically unless you've got something really really special you're going to be losing money on your car so you're going to have to eventually get rid of it that's a fundamental part of the game um 
which is not so great for car enthusiasts because we're losing out. We're losing out on that fun factor. The, well, the noise is gone. <laughs> um, try putting an exhaust on an electric car <laughs> to try and get more noise. Um, yeah, you're going to fail. In fact, any kind of modification on an electric car I hazard, yeah, it's just not going to be worth it. You know, there's so much tech going on there. Um, leave it to the manufacturer and leave it alone. Um, it would be my advice. I know there's so many tuning companies out there now for um, combustion engine cars, and I don't really know what they're going to do in time to come. You know, it's not it's not going to last forever. But I think we should look forward to something like an ID three R. Um, and again, I'll keep tabs. I'll see if there's um, more information. I think the ID three needs to get itself up to speed. They need to start selling. I think they wanted to sell something, uh, you know, a crazy amount of units. I think three million units by 2023 or something worldwide um so we'll have to wait for it to get to that kind of stage um they're obviously bw are pinning all their hopes on this car um, and they will want a halo product and i think that halo product is going to be the r again which is great um that should be quite an exciting car no doubt it will be four wheel drive because it's electric no doubt it could have some sort of party mode think tesla with its ludicrous mode um something that can absolutely destroy most things and probably handle better than you probably would think a, a heavy electric car can. Um, so I think that's something really cool to look forward to. And again, stay tuned to this channel. You know, I, I generally, you know, I keep it around stuff that I enjoy. You can probably tell from this video, it's a little bit more casual than other videos. That's how I kind of do it on the Mondays for the weekly kind of news. Um, yeah, Porsche has always been such a, a cool, cool, car for me it's all part of the same type of vw group i love the golf r um yeah what vw kind of doing really impresses me i'm a big fast forward fan as well but what they're doing at the moment isn't massively you know i'm not getting out of my seat it's not something that i'm really keen to show videos on because it's not really exciting to me um you know yeah if if you not find a ford puma exciting great but i i don't um <laughs> the fact that they can the mark 4 focus rs was was disappointing for me because yeah it just that's such an exciting car um that could have come out um yeah we're just left with the mark free focus rs which is no bad thing because that's a fantastic car um but the way vw going about their business you could probably see them succeeding um they, they've they've got the funds to be able to deliver a cracking id free product and in years to come ultimately get a halo car um, even if that's sold in small numbers, it's still something that we can aspire to and to look forward to driving, to taking on a track day, to taking to motoring events. Um, and I think that's something that, you know, we should really kind of not look back at the past in terms of combustion engines and naturally aspirated engines because they're all great, um, but they're going to go. <laughs> they are going to go. They might go slowly in other countries. You know, you look at America, they're not looking like they really want to um, get on top of emissions and yeah, you know, taxis have like V8s in them, don't they? So yeah, that's what where they're at. But you know, it will all it will all catch up with everyone in the end. Um, so yeah, let's 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 look forward to the ID three R and um, let me know what you think about that kind of car. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. But yeah, that's really it. That's kind of the topics I wanted to talk about. GT four RS, super exciting. ID three R. Let's see what happens, eh? Um, and obviously the Mark 8 Golf R, which I've done so much on this channel. Um, I fear that will probably be the last generation of Golf. <laughs> and as a result, that will probably be the one of the pinnacle cars. Will there be like an R Plus or something like that? Something really uh, like a proper hyper hatch? We'll have to wait and see. Um, will I buy one? Maybe. You know, you only live once in this life. So... Um, yeah, I don't really want to think about the things that I didn't do. I want to, um, you know, you're never going to regret something you do actually do. You're just going to learn from it. Um, wherever, whereas if you don't do it, you'll never learn from it and you'll never know. So you'll have to see. Um, I'd certainly love to document it on this channel just as a as a minimum, um, let alone all the stuff it can do for me in terms of, you know, it's just, it could be a really, really cool car to enjoy. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for all of that. But anyway, I've gone on for far long too long enough um thanks so much for watching i hope you have a fantastic rest of your week um i've got a few videos coming up this week as well um yeah if you're not familiar i've got the warranty work plus <laughs> to sort out um so i'll share that with you and see if i 
get into arguments with the main dealer, which I almost certainly will because I'm not that happy. <laughs> um, and yeah, we'll see what other content comes up. We're going to see more about the market golf bar and you'll see it here first on this channel. We'll see what pop pops up elsewhere as well. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for all the support. Um, drop a comment as always and I'll be sure to respond and give it a like if you've enjoyed this video. And enjoy if, let me know if you've actually enjoyed this type of series. This is the fourth one of my kind of Monday evening weekly news. Um, a little bit more casual, just general card talk um, across a range of what I talk about on the channel. Um, See, so yeah, I hope you lot have enjoyed it. I think it's going okay. Um, yeah, if it keeps going well, um, I'll keep doing it. And um, yeah, I hope you keep um, enjoying it. But yeah, have a fantastic rest of your day. Fantastic rest of your week. Um, stay tuned for more content. And yeah, be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Plenty more card talk to come. And I'll see you again next time. Cheers, guys.